Hello and welcome back. On today's episode, we'll be writing a shader that replicates a force shield effect. You may know it as the rim or Fresnel lighting effect. Additionally, we will be using what we have learned on the previous video and apply some distortion to maximize the effect. But before that, I want to thank you all for the incredible support I've received on the last video. I wasn't expecting so many people reacting to it, and it makes me extremely happy to know you like the content. Remember that you can support me by sharing, subscribing, commenting or donating on my It's Show and Coffee account. Ok, back to the video now. I created a sci-fi scene with a space marine, as I feel this shield effect will fit better in this kind of environment. By pressing the force field button or C, we toggle the shield on and off. As you may have guessed, the shield is nothing but a child sphere object linked to the space marine. As we are also applying some distortion, we will take the render texture of the screen, like we did last time, but the difference is that the distortion effect is now limited to the area of the sphere, in contrast to the post-processing applied to the entire screen. Let's set some objectives so we can easier analyze this shader. First, we need to get a copy of the screen image being rendered. We also want to distort that screen image, but only where our shield object is located at. For practical purposes we'll be using a normal map, but remember you can also distort the texture manually with a mathematical function. Then, we want to add a rim effect around the edges of our shield object. And for aesthetic purposes we will customize the shield by changing the color and scrolling speed of the normal map. With these objectives we can now jump right into shader code. First, we need a background texture, which we will deform. We could get that texture with a graph pass within the shader, but I think this time it will be better to set up a second camera that renders the texture without a shield object. Then, we pass the texture to the material with a render texture asset. Our render texture will be projected in screen space coordinates, and then masked with our shield object. Imagine we have two layers now. The top layer is our game, and the second layer behind is our render texture. Because how a mask works, we will only see the second layer wherever our shield object is located at. Then the distortion effect works the same as last time. We unpack a normal map and apply the effect to our render texture. I'm using a second set of UV coordinates to better organize the code, but you can use the original UVs if you want. Then I use a custom offset and tiling values from the properties to give us some artistic freedom. Now comes the fun part, adding the rim or Fresnel effect. I won't pretend I know the reasoning behind all of these calculations, but what I do know is the logic behind them. Imagine that for every pixel of the shield, a laser is shot from the camera. When we normalize that laser, we get the view direction. Then, the direction the faces of the sphere are facing have another normalized vector called normals. When we do a matrix multiplication, these two normalized vectors return a value between 0 and 1, which represent how parallel these vectors are from one another. In mathematics, this result is obtained with the dot product. But wait a minute, now the rim is black and the center is white. To fix that, we invert the values we got, and by doing that, we now get how perpendicular the faces are corresponding to the view direction. Now that's better. If you want to learn more about how this works, you can click the link appearing on the top of the screen. Finally, we multiply this rim effect by a color, and voila, we have a fully customizable shield. You can see that I have set a secondary rim effect to outline and improve the looks of the shield. The good thing about writing shaders is that it is extremely easy to modify them once you know how they work. I bet you've been wondering what does the D-trigger button does? Well, if the scene looks a little bit weird, that is because in reality this isn't a 2D scene at all. Because we are using a 3D sphere, the shader effect can also be used in 3D environments too. Amazing, isn't it? Just be sure to change both cameras' projection mode to perspective or orthographic depending on what you need. And that's all for today. As always, the files are free to download from my YouTube page. Or you can clone the repositories on GitHub and GitLab. And remember to support the channel by sharing, subscribing and donating at my itch.io page.